Hello, people watching vehicle reviews on the internet. Welcome to this, the 2023 Range Rover P440E PHEV. Today, I'm gonna get this plug-in hybrid up in the air. We're gonna nerd out in the tech specs, see how it was constructed, take it off-road a bit, and then go give it the beans on toast. Cause it's British. Okay. Okay, first Range Rover I've ever reviewed in my entire life. Excited. First up, the towing capacity of this Range Rover as equipped is 7,716 pounds. It's highly specific. Whoa, neat. That's a rugged brace. Out back, the fifth generation Range Rover utilizes a five link multi link rear suspension paired with what Land Rover calls air springs because notice it does have a traditional damper right over here to the side, which is also adaptive. And hidden underneath these little plastic aero skid shields, this is also equipped with rear wheel steering, giving you up to 7.3 degrees of rear turning capability. Now, if this was the Range Rover Sport, that my head fits. This would have this crazy Rue Goldberg anti-roll system. But this one utilizes a traditional rear anti-sway bar and it measures in at approximately 26 millimeter in diameter. Is this steel? Oh, it is. Up above this little skin plate is the electronic locking rear differential. And because of the fact that it is an electronic locking diff, it has torque vectoring capabilities to transfer that torque left or right as needed. Now you can get these L460 Range Rovers in either a short wheelbase or a seven passenger long wheelbase model, this being the short wheelbase five passenger. And it weighs in as equipped at 5,860 pounds, largely thanks to do with that giant lithium ion battery pack. It's got a metal fuel tank instead of a plastic one. Weird. As far as the transmission and driveline goes, this thing is equipped with the ZF8 HP76X, which is a eight speed automatic with a maximum torque input rating of 760 Newton meters or 560 pound feet of torque. And the four wheel drive system utilizes a two speed transfer case. Up front, you have an all aluminum in construction, including the knuckles, multi-link suspension, paired with a set of adaptive dampers. Look, it's ribbed. And it says as -gum. this little aluminum barnacle bolted to the front of the knuckle right here. Looks like some kind of a mud scraper maybe to prevent rocks and mud from getting built up. Uh, front anti-sway bar, that is a huge fucking suspension arm. Front anti-sway bar measures in at approximately 32 millimeter in diameter. Ow, I thought it was plastic. That is super strong. Time for the braking test. Let's see what this thing can do. No one behind me. Ready? <gasps> okay. Wow. This thing being so heavy and being a, a hybrid with that extra mass of the battery pack. That was a lot shorter stopping distance than I thought it was gonna be. That braking was just accomplished thanks to a 378 millimeter or 14.9 inch front rotor with a six piston monoblock Brembo caliper. The wheels, they are 21 by eight and a half with a positive 43 and a half millimeter offset. And they're manufactured in Italy, actually, by the way, fun fact. Uh, the tires, it's wrapped in a set of Michelin Premacy All Seasons in a 275-50-21. Out back, you have a 353 millimeter or 13.9 inch rotor with a single piston floating caliper. And the wheel and the tire, same size as you get up front. High five, bud. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the beans. First, I must conduct an assessment of bolstering. However, I can adjust my bolstering. I go into seats. There's the seat heat menu. You can choose what zones you want. The rear, oh neat. Adjust, select bolster. It's like someone's slightly hugging me. Okay, now I can do a bolstering test. Good, excellent bolstering. These seats are heated, ventilated, full massage and they're made out of a material that I can't even pronounce. I think this means that the seats are made out of recycled fabrics. It is so soft to the touch, but I also think it's easy to get dirty too. The dials for the climate control in this thing are smart. So if you pull it, it changes the menu function so you can control your fan speed. And it's default setting, you can control the temperature. And if you push it real good, 
you can control the ventilation or conversely the heat for the seats as well as the steering wheel is heated whoa that lights up oh that's crazy of course i got to use a little bit of a massage feature while i'm doing the beans test so i'm gonna enable that massage yes please choose my massage oh there's all kinds of different options well geez i want a rolling combination it feels like a cat making biscuits how can there possibly be more to these seats oh well that's handy drop your ski that's how you know you've made it in life you have a ski hatch no. As far as drive modes go, I have dynamic, eco, comfort, grass, gravel, and snow. Well, that's kind of neat. Certain menus have activate low traction launch. That must be like a crawl control. This is a hybrid, so you can either drive it in hybrid, electric, or gasoline power. I have my dynamic stability control right here. I can defeat that if I want. I don't think it's gonna help. And go from drive or tap it down one more and go to sport, and that automatically fires up the straight six. So I got maximum beanage. All right, let's see what this thing can do. Ready? Go. Okay. Ooh, that's good torque. Ooh, sounds good. Sounds really good. That's good. This thing's definitely quick for how big it is, and this isn't even the fastest version. You can get this with a twin turbo V8 with over 600 horsepower. Oh, where's the hood popper? Man, this thing smells good in here. I should start reviewing car smells. Hood pop, hood struts, what? Contraption, it's got two, two hooks. Let's get a look at this Ingenuum. Underneath the hood of this Range Rover P440E is the Ingenuum 3 liter dual overhead cam twin charged inline six that produces 434 horsepower at 5,500 to 6,500 RPM and 457 pound feet of torque from 1,500 to 5,000 RPM. Now keep in mind that is with the assistance of an 105 kilowatt or 141 horsepower electric motor that is mounted longitudinally with the drivetrain. So up top right here, you have the water to air charge cooler. And then right down here, you have a twin scroll turbocharger and then an electric supercharger. It's a rather ingenuous idea. That doesn't work at all, does it? Not even the slightest bit. It's got aluminum strut tower brace that's built into the firewall right there. And then also keep in mind where that strut tower is located in relation to that straight six. The engine sits quite a bit behind the front axle. Digging in a little bit deeper on this 2,997 cc straight six, it has an 83 by 92.6 millimeter bore and stroke with an aluminum block, but with cast iron cylinder liners and aluminum head. And those heads do have the exhaust manifold cast into them. This also does employ continuous valve lift as well as variable cam timing. All right, let's take this thing for a rip. Just out of sheer curiosity with the rear wheel steering, where I'm parked right now is about the average width of a normal two lane road. I wanna see if this thing is capable of turning completely around in this area without having to do an Austin Powers. I don't, this is, I don't think it, like this is a really short area. I don't know, 7.3 degrees is enough, but I don't think it's enough to do this. Uh, you can make the determination. I think I would be going a little bit off of a two lane road, maybe, I don't know. You count the shoulder? That was a bad example of whether this is useful or not. A good example is showing you on a trail. Oh yeah. See, that's where it comes in handy is off road. I guess I could have tried this on asphalt and that would have made a lot more sense than doing it in the dirt, but I like doing it in the dirt. In front of me lies a hill that makes most unibody based all wheel drive vehicles fail. And I'm going to tackle this with probably no sweat whatsoever. I'm having great confidence in this thing. For off-road, I have grass, gravel, snow, mud and ruts, sand, rock crawl, and wade. Put it in neutral. I'm gonna select low range, four by four info. All of my telemetry data, wade sensing. It knows when I'm floating. Tr well, there's the description of all the different modes. Oh, that's nice that you have that. What does vehicle dimensions do? 
Oh, no way. It shows me my approach angle, my brake over, all the pertinent off-road information under vehicle dimensions. I was wondering what that's for. The ride height is in its fullest height setting. Center diff is locked. And uh, let's see what this thing can do. Nice and slow. I'm gonna put these tires to the test. <laughs> it doesn't matter what tires are on this thing. Those are some good robots. When I think of off-roading in a Range Rover, I think of exotic places across the world where you would take one, where there's lots of unpredictability in the terrain and the environment. Instead, I found an abandoned lot in the middle of Tucson. So I'm gonna simulate some unpredictability by going down a rather steep, aggressive hill and then having to stop abruptly and change direction and go back up the hill because there was a lion at the bottom. Have an imagination, okay? I do have a hill descent control button. Can I set my speed? Oh, I see there's a little arrow. There's a little bar on the speedometer where you can set your speed. That is classy and easy to miss. Sweet, what else do I got? Oh, that's perfect. Drive forward to see view from underneath the hood. Oh, geez. I've been down this before, but it never gets easier. Like I literally just went down this in the Bronco Sport and it was no problem, but it feels terrifying every single time. Okay, hill descent control. Entrusting you to now stop the vehicle. Now I gotta do an abrupt, like I don't think I can do this on these tires. Reverse back up the hill. Putting it to a challenge now. Yeah, that was all tires getting angry. The four wheel drive system though is brilliant. The robots just were like, we're smarter than you human. Why are you doing this? But the air suspension, you can go anywhere from the lowest setting, which is called access, giving you only six inches of ground clearance. And then you can go from access to normal to off-road and off-road two. I'm going to put it into off-road two, which is now the highest setting. It actually goes up fairly quickly too. And now at its maximum height, it gives you up to 11 inches of ground clearance. Oh yeah, this thing rips in the dirt. How is the suspension though? I'm on 21 inch wheels and I'm not exactly going slow in the dirt. I will say one thing I do notice is when the suspension reaches full droop and then it has to come back up, you can hear a little bit of harshness right there. A lot of people criticize unibody SUVs as not being actually off-road capable and I have one thing to say about that. Excuse the noise from the HVAC system. It's like 104 outside, so give me a break. What does this do? What? Are you serious? Okay, that's sick. What is in this thing? I got some USBs. What? Shut up. What is this? That is so sick. A trash can? What? <laughs> Get out of here right now. Oh, it's a cup holder. The most elaborate cup holder system ever. What else can I do? Ski hatch. This is so crazy. Now, I do not have massage back here. That would just be way too bougie. I got tons of room back here. What the? I have memory power seats in the rear. I have never seen that before. This has to be the most durable carpet I've ever seen in a vehicle ever. This is crazy. Don't mind the dirts. I've been off road. This carpet though, I swear you could probably pressure wash it. It's so durable yet super plush. Does it do like the front? Yes, there's my fan speed. Ventilated rear seats, that's what's up. Whoa, I can put, that's, I can open the roof from back here. You can see right here just how far back these rear seats will actually recline. How far do you actually recline? You gotta be kidding me. 
It's shoving the front seat out of your way so you can lay down. I can turn off my speakers back here. So if your parents are listening to music that you just can't stand, you can turn it off. I don't think that's something real. Oh, there's a road runner. I don't know if the camera caught him. There's a road runner, he's thirsty. So check this out. You have a traditional hatch that opens up, but below that, there's a power tailgate too. I've never seen that before. That is so smart. Keep stuff from rolling out. This little rear storage thing is actually pretty sweet. It feels rugged too. What is it? Oh, I can raise and lower the air suspension back here too. The quality of the materials everywhere on this thing are on point. What does under here? Oh, the spare tire. Okay. The tail lights are super stealth on this thing. You can't even tell it's a tail light. With the Meridian sound package, you get 35 speakers, like one up here by your mirror. I would rank the Meridian sound system just a notch above the Burmeister, but not quite on the Mark Levinson level. Well, I guess the air is a little bit stinky outside right now. It says 16 parts per million, 2.5, but it's clean inside. In case you have four gloves in total, there are two glove boxes. This thing's so bougie, it has an armrest next to your armrest. Speaking of armrest, is that what I think it is? No. It's got a cooler. Well, that gets cold fast. The Lexus has something like this too. Neat. Just when I thought there was something that Mercedes might have them on. Cabin lighting. Let's see how you do it. Well, you do have colors. As far as pure electric range goes, you get about 48 miles of pure EV driving. However, because of the weight of the vehicle and the size of the battery pack, it takes quite a while to charge. My number one major complaint and downfall I feel with this thing though, is if you're driving on the road in normal drive, EV setting, and you need to give it the beans all of a sudden and you floor it, there's nobody home. It just hesitates and then all of a sudden the gas engine will kick on and then it will surge and go. So you have to have it either sport or dynamic mode or both to lessen the pause and have it more seamless integration from EV to gas hybrid. Where this shines over some of the Lexus trucks I've driven is in the interior, especially it does feel more high end. It doesn't feel like a dressed up Toyota, but that's also where the Lexus I feel shines it's a dressed up Toyota. So you know that thing will still be running at three or 400,000 miles. I will say for someone that scours junkyards a lot, I do see a lot of Range Rovers and Land Rovers in there. And I think a lot of it has to do not with the vehicle, but the type of people that buy these because they're so expensive, they essentially just become a luxury appliance for some people when they start to fall apart because they're not exactly maintaining them themselves or maybe skipping out on some of the dealer maintenance. They just go to shit. Personally, I feel if I were to buy one of these things, I would take care of it and make it last the rest of my lifetime just like I would any other vehicle. And it feels well built like it would. Time to give this thing some scores, starting with the coveted bean score, the assessment of the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And this P440E Range Rover SE is getting a rating of Followed by the cookie score assessment of value and at just over $126,000 as equipped, this one is getting a rating of Followed by the wrench score, the assessment of ease of maintenance, and this Range Rover gets a rating of Holy shit, again! I gotta glue that thing better! <laughs> Next is the meatball score, it's assessment of a vehicle's off-road capabilities, and this 2023 Range Rover is getting a rating of Let's be honest, this thing didn't even sweat out here. If it had some different tires on it. And lastly is the Penguin score, the assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle and this is getting a rating of. I will say this, I always thought Jeremy Clarkson was just a bit patriotic and biased when he would always favor Range Rovers, but after spending a week in this thing, he's not. It's really that good. Range Rovers are a whole vibe. I enjoyed this thing thoroughly. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll see you soon with another. Bye.